Lord thy God which have brought thee out of the land of yes, Egypt yes, and yes. out of the house of bondage. Yes, yes. Thou shalt have no, no other, other gods before me. me. Stop right there. Mm. Jesus. <clears throat> you can't have any other God before me, but you want to put everything else above me. You, you might not be serving Buddha. You might not be serving Muhammad. And you might not be serving confusion. But you serving that carnal. You serving that credit card bill. You know what I'm talking about. You you serving all those other things that, that may not necessarily be gods to someone else, but they have become your God because you spend more time trying to get them mm. than to get him into your heart and into your presence. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven or above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them for the Lord thy God am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Woo. Listen, I, for, for my children's sake and for my children's children's sake, I'm going to serve God because I don't want the wrath of God or I don't want the iniquity of of the fathers to be passed down from generation to generation, right? Generational curses are real and they have to be broken. They have to be broken with you. You have to start them now. Start a new, a new uh, a generational blessing. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. When did I stop? Uh, verse six. And shewing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not. Remember, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Verse 8, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Then jump down to verse 13. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his um, donkey, nor anything that is in thy neighbor's. You want to be morally excellent. You want to have, you want to show God that you're that you're moving toward moral excellence. Don't worry about anything else that anybody else has. Don't make anything else or anybody else more important to you than your God. So I'll be singing that song. I love you, Jesus. Uh, I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you, I love you more than anything. Show Him. It's it's, it's wonderful to sing the song. It's wonderful to, to, to get that song down into your spirit. But, but sometimes it's very, very hard to live that song. Mm. It's very, very hard to live that song because your flesh wants to do other things. Your flesh wants to please itself. You've got to rely on the spirit that God placed on the inside of you to please him. Because your flesh can't do it. Your flesh will steer you wrong day in and day out. Now, why should I pursue moral excellence? Uh, uh, why should I pursue it? The scripture, uh, in, in Galatians 3.22, the scripture, but the, it says, But the scripture hath concluded all under sin that the promise of faith, or oh, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Wherefore, the law 
was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. I've got to pursue moral excellence because I've got to show God how much I love him. The Bible says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Right? If you love me, do what I ask you to do. Do what I, do what I command you to do in my word. If you love me, don't go around chasing after things that I haven't ordained for you to have in the first place. If you love me, stop chasing around people that I never ordained for you in the first place. If you love me, seek my face. If you love me, follow after me. Let me tell you who that man is. Let me tell you who that woman is. Let me show you what that thing is that, that, that you think you want to do, but I want to show you what I want you to do. And if you do what I want you to do, the thing that you think, uh, the thing that you think is going to give you prosperity is only going to be minuscule compared to what I want to do for you. If you think God wants you to be in lack, you think he wants you to always be struggling from paycheck to paycheck, you've got another thing coming. But he wants to know, can I trust you? Can I trust you morally? Can I trust you to be morally excellent and add to your faith all of these things so that you can receive the promise that I have for you. Romans 5, 17 says this, For if, if by one man's offense death resigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. That's not the scripture I wanted. That's the problem with technology. <laughs> why, 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 why should I be morally excellent? That's it, Romans 8, 4. I'm sorry, gave you the wrong one. Why should I be excellent? So that righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. The law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but of the things of the spirit. That's why it's important for believers, for Christians, to be morally excellent. Who? Who are examples? Who are examples of moral excellence? Who are examples of moral excellence? See, it's hard. It's very hard in today's society, in today's world, to even find it's even hard in today's society to find men and women who are good examples of moral excellence. Even those who who are supposed to be morally excellent because of their position or their title are falling by the wayside day in and day I don't care what arena you look in whether it be in the in the government whether it be in the, in, in politics whether it be in church leaders are falling by the wayside because we have an issue with moral excellence. We have to look in the Bible to find people who were morally excellent. We know the one who came to save us, the one who died on the cross for us, was our greatest example of moral excellence 
But there is another. If you look at Daniel, Daniel was 